Hi guys, this is Dr. Pangelinen, and in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the sixth skill module in the Special Olympics Young Athletes Program, Striking. At the end of this lecture, students will understand the activities in the Striking Skills module. You'll learn how to observe children's movements while they perform the different activities in this module. And for groups 17 to 20, you will develop activities to build upon the skills trained in this module. The goals for this module include helping children become more proficient at striking. Striking means hitting a ball or object with one's hand or an object like a stick, bat, paddle, or racket. Striking helps to build eye-hand coordination necessary for many sports, including tennis, golf, softball or baseball, volleyball, and floorball or hockey. The picture on the right is all the activities in this module. I will go through each of these activities in terms of the goals and modifications or progressions. We will then watch videos of children doing each activity. The first activity is called handball. For this activity, the coach or parent places a slow motion ball like a beach ball or balloon on a cone or tee. The child will hit the ball or balloon with either a fist or an open hand. The goal is to practice striking a stationary object. Now let's watch a video of a child participating in this activity. The coach holds the ball in place since the beach ball diameter is much larger than the cone. The child stands sideways and mostly uses his trunk to rotate to hit the ball. It's easy for the child to keep his arm stationary and rotate his trunk to hit the ball. As a child gets more proficient, the coach could use much smaller balls to improve the child's accuracy when striking the ball. The second activity is called ball tap. The goal is to practice striking a ball or balloon with an open hand towards the coach or another child. For this activity, the child must track the ball or balloon as it travels in the air. The coach can count the number of successful taps before the ball hits the floor. The activity guide provides tips for observation. First, large balls are easier to strike than small balls. Second, stationary objects are easier to strike than moving objects. There is no video of children participating in this activity. The third activity is called beginning floor ball or golf. The goal of this activity is for children to practice striking a ball on the ground sideways with a dowel, stick, bat, or club. For this activity, the kids will hold a dowel with a thumbs pointed down and will hit the ball that's placed on the ground. The activity guide provides recommendations for group play. Set up a goal with two cones and have the children take turns playing goalie. The goalie will practice trapping and catching. The children will take turns shooting on goal. As the children progress in skill, they can move from striking large balls to striking small balls. The children can also practice striking with different objects like golf clubs or hockey sticks. Let's watch the video of this activity. In the video, the child strikes a beach ball with a long dowel. In the first video, he keeps his feet still and close together. In the second video, his feet are separated and he takes a tiny step with the front foot as he strikes the ball. This is a more advanced movement pattern. As a child progresses in skill, he should take a big step with the front foot as he strikes the ball. The fourth activity is called beginning tennis or softball. The goal of this activity is for children to practice striking a ball on a tee or cone while standing sideways with a paddle or bat. As a child progresses in skill, he or she can practice striking the ball that is gently tossed to them. The activity guide provides recommendations for group play. A coach can set up bases for the children to run around after they hit the ball to mimic softball or baseball. Let's watch a video of this activity. The coach places a small ball on top of a cone. The child mostly uses trunk rotation to hit the ball with a plastic paddle. As the child becomes more proficient, 
the coach can encourage him to take a step with the front foot while swinging the paddle. The activity guide provides tips for observation. Balls thrown slowly and with a smaller arc are easier to hit than balls thrown fast or with a high arc. In addition, I find it helpful when tossing or throwing a ball to a child to do a countdown, three, two, one. This helps the child better anticipate the timing of the ball and when to strike it. The fifth activity is called beginning volleyball. The goal of this activity is to practice tapping or hitting a ball or balloon with an open hand from one side to another. For this activity, the children are divided into two groups and separated by a balance beam, rope, or low net. The children will tap or hit the ball or balloon with an open hand to the other side of the barrier. The activity guide provides tips for observation. Shifting weight is an important aspect of striking. Children can practice shifting weight by rocking forward and backwards or side to side while standing on floor markers before striking the ball. As mentioned, as children become more proficient, they can stand with their feet separated slightly to encourage weight shifting. Eventually, the child can step when striking the ball, which is another way to encourage weight shifting, but requires more balance and coordination. Okay, let's watch the video of beginning volleyball. In the first video, the children use one or two hands to try to hit the ball over the barrier. In the second video, the children are seated and hit a much smaller beach ball to each other. The children need to pay attention to the ball and anticipate its movements. Okay, in preparation for the quiz, you should all know the goals and modifications for each of these activities. For those of you in groups 17 to 20, you can meet with your group to pick one of these activities in the module that you'd like to modify for your group project. Again, you can change the equipment or instructions or rules, but the general goal of the activity should be the same as the original activity. Your task card will need to incorporate simple images and text to describe your new activity. Again, make sure to follow the examples provided on Canvas, and please feel free to email me if your group would like to discuss your activity in advance or if you have any questions about the material covered in this lecture.